بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا الدين وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وما توفيقي ولا اعتصامي إلا بالله عليه توكل وعليه فليتوكل المؤمنون الحمد لله that we had the opportunity this year to witness, to fast, and to complete the month of Ramadan. For those people who enjoyed the spiritual blessings, for those people who enjoyed the prayers, for those people who enjoyed the dhikr, for those people who enjoyed serving the others, it was a great opportunity as every year to be a part and to be among those who benefit from the blessed month of Ramadan. And indeed, we feel a sense of sadness, as a matter of fact, when Ramadan is over. We feel a sense of sadness because we recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so much spiritual blessings, upliftments, joy, spiritual joy during this blessed month of Ramadan. And we understand that the days ahead, they're not going to be the same as the days of Ramadan. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the Lord of Ramadan, He is the Lord of the other 11 months as well. The way how we were in the month of Ramadan, we should continue with that rhythm throughout the year as well. As a matter of fact, when you think about it, the month of Ramadan is the month that opens the door for an increased worship. Opens the door and it tells you that, hey, you got ready during this month. You became so strong during this month with your zakat, with your sadaqat, with your assisting the others, with your prayers, with reading the Quran. And now you are ready to go for another 11 months. Unfortunately, most of the people, when this month is over, they don't look at the other days just like the days of Ramadan. And in reality, they're not exactly the same. But that uh, strive or that uh, effort that we have put during the month of Ramadan should be strong enough to keep us going for the rest of the year until the next Ramadan. I want you to think about a person. Let's say, for example, a farmer who works so hard during the springtime, during summertime, during the autumn time, and then later on during the winter time, for those three, four months, or whatever the time may be, he or she has enough because that person has saved, you know, from working so hard during the other season, has saved so much, So when winter comes, the person will manage it. And it doesn't make sense for the person to say that, you know what, the season is over, we've got nothing now, so it's time for us just to uh, start asking the others. No, that's not the case, because if you you, uh, saved and if you were uh, smart enough to go out there and to sell some of the things too, then you can be able to survive easily during the month, during the rest of the year. So us as well, if we had the opportunity and if our ibadah meant something, we should be able now to be boosted spiritually and we should have that tawakkul, that reliance on God and also that istiqama, that firmness in our actions to continue for the rest of the year. And if that tawakkul, and if that istiqama, that, that uh, firmness, it was something that Ramadan did not teach, or we didn't take it seriously during the month of Ramadan, then we're going to be very weak, as a matter of fact, to continue for the rest of the year. But I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made every single one of us among those servants of his who have fasted seriously and they have taken into consideration 
all of these other actions during Ramadan, these righteous actions, including prayers and uh, dhikr and Quran recitation and the opportunities to do good overall, inshallah, they have taken those seriously, they have committed to those, and they will be well off for the rest of the year. Now, alhamdulillah, one of these great deeds that we have performed as a community is also the recitation of the Quran from the beginning all the way to the end. We started uh, on the first day of Ramadan and we had uh, many reciters, mainly local here. We had some students who are students at, UI, uh, at UICA or Greenway Academy who have recited and also there are helpers, there are assistant teachers at uh, Greenway Academy and they have helped to continue you know, reading the Quran on a daily basis. And the beauty of this is, I mean, we could have found some Hufav and some best reciters, as a matter of fact, around the world. And we could have put them uh, through and maybe listen to the recitation and just simply, you know, follow up with reading. But we understand that the reward is going to be much bigger. And we understand that it is more genuine when these efforts, they are being put from your local community. And t keeping that in mind, that's what we started with during the month of Ramadan. And Alhamdulillah, Allah gave us success to complete this. And I'm not saying that we didn't have anyone from outside. We had a few reciters as well from outside. Um, and let me mention the names since this is going to be the last night uh, of these series of uh, Ramadan series. Um, Hafiz Saif Muhammad from uh, Wisconsin right now, originally from Chicago. He has joined us on almost daily basis, reading with us, even though sometimes he had to delay the, the, the iftar, but he wanted to join with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and reward him for all of that effort that he has put. We had also Hafiz Muhammad who was a uh, winner of the competitions of Musabaqat al-Quran al-Kareem fil Maghrib. He had the second place. He got the second place in a, in a national scale competition in Morocco. So we enjoyed his uh, beautiful reading with uh, typical Andalusian and uh, Moroccan style of reading. So that was a blessing. So we wanted to kind of spice it up, our recitation, our daily recitation. But then again, from here, from our locals, we had Hafiz Abdul Malik, who was with us almost, almost on a daily basis. And uh, mashallah, he is among those who received an ijazah from us at UICA in uh, reciting the Holy Quran. And he finished memorizing from the beginning all the way to the end. So we were blessed to hear his recitation and to join also with uh, Dr. Muhammad Salhab, who is uh, one of our local community members as well, a good reciter, mashallah. Him and his family, they're very active in our center, UICA, and also Greenway Academy. We also had one of our students slash teacher assistant, uh, Bala uh, Abdul Ghani, who is originally from Halab, from Syria, a young guy who has been reading on daily basis. I believe he missed only one. And I appreciate, even though he's young, I appreciate his efforts because uh, subhanAllah, I can see a future in him, you know, for having not just uh, being there present, but having the wish to read and read, you know, taking it seriously. While some people, they could, but they probably don't take it as serious. And also, uh, Brother Ahmed Uthman, another young guy from Syria, who is one of our students slash teacher assistant at Greenway Academy, who has been uh, constantly joining our recitation as well on a daily basis. So uh, we also had uh, a few others, but the surprise, the surprise came uh, at the end. The surprise came at the end, uh, the last day, which was today, we had uh, students of Greenway Academy 
And I'm talking about those below 10 years old, probably seven, eight, nine, and above too, but mainly they were young ones, you know, below 10 years old. Uh, some girls and some boys as well who recited and they completed juice number 30. And this is, this is a community. I mean, this is what we're trying to do. I mentioned in our last Friday khutbah, I said that we have to look at two different dimensions. It was not a khutbah, it was a reminder, but it, we have to look at two different dimensions in order for us to go forward as a community. We are in this country, even though Islam has been here from day one in America, but our communities at large, they are almost brand new. We have been developing mainly in the last, I would say probably 40 years or so, 40, 50, 60 years maximum. And let's say, for example, here in Phoenix, in Arizona from the 80s, you know, which is about 30 some years community. So when we grow, I mean, yeah, the communities will grow because people, they keep coming. There is immigrants, there are refugees that come here in this country often. But if you don't know how to put some guidelines for a community growth, it can grow, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there is going to be quality. There is quantity, but there is no quality. And what's going to happen to the next generation? They're going to have to deal with so many obstacles, so many challenges that we were unable to really pave our path for them. And that is not the right thing to do. Religiously, we are obligated to fulfill our uh, responsibilities. And again, in order to grow our communities, which is a part of fulfilling our responsibilities, we need to look at our congregation, which is going to, uh, based on the actions of the congregation, based on the rituals that the congregation is going to perform, they're going to strengthen that uh, bound be between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that includes Friday prayers. It includes uh, uh, Quran recitation, for example. It includes all of these good things that will strengthen that, that bond between the community members and Allah. That is very essential. And alhamdulillah, we do that very good all over the masajids. But one thing that I am a little bit critical about and I raise my voice often, is to have our institutions, institu uh, institutes or mosques or organizations become stronger through a good connection or through a good bond between the community members. And a part of that is that the community members, they get engaged with the activities, with the concerns, with the efforts of the leadership of each mosque or organization or an institute, a school, whatever the case may be, there must be a strong bond between. If you have only a strong bond between the community members and Allah through those uh, righteous deeds, as I said, the prayers or the, or the Quran recitation or whatever the case may be, that is good, but it's not going to be enough. And I give an example, I said, it is like a bird who needs to fly with two wings and with only one wing can't make it. We see in the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he was concerned about his community and the community members, they were concerned about each, each other as well. It does not work. We cannot grow a community. We cannot prosper. We cannot leave something valuable for our own children in the future, for the next generation, if we fail to strengthen that bond between each other. And that's why I speak loud often and I say, I am against the approach of many individuals, many individuals who come to the mosque and they treat the mosque as only the, pray, the place for prayer. Because this is what unfortunately we're used to in many Muslim countries. The mosque serves only one purpose, prayer, read Quran, and then get out of there. And maybe just put something in the donation box whenever we can, and then out of there. And I say always in and out. You know, you're in and you're out. You're less concerned about what's happening in your community. 
This is unfortunately the approach of most of the people. Unfortunately, it is the approach of most of the people. And I'm not talking about UICA here only. I'm talking about mosques in general in America. There are very few mosques. You can, you can, you know, nationwide that are very active and they have really uh, strengthened the bonds between members, between each other. There are very few of those, you know, but a majority of them, unfortunately, that doesn't exist there. And that's what I'm, you know, I'm speaking very loud and I'm encouraging everybody to pay attention to this point. This is the second important dimension of community. Every member should pay attention to fulfilling the rights they have towards God by fulfilling these acts of obligation in a communal way, in a congregational way, but also the second dimension, which I consider it very important, crucial, as important as the other one, is also establishing the good bond, the good connection. Mu'amalat, bayna nas. Mu'amalat, so these are the relationships that people have in a community. And everyone who comes to a community, who is a part of a congregation, must feel that this is their second home. This is my second home. The masjid is my second home. Those people who come to the masjid, they are my brothers and my sisters. They are my family. First of all, do I know them? Do I know their names? Do I know who these people are? Do I know who is who? Do I know who is specialized in certain things? Instead of going and asking for help other people, we have some you know, local people who can, you know, in our communities who can do amazing jobs. Do I know what, what is their need? Do I know the poor people in my community, those who need assistance? When you come to the masjid and you see 500 people praying Friday prayer, don't think that everybody is like you. You would not think that. I hope you don't think that. There are among them, there are poor people as well who can, who can hardly make it at the end of their month. They can probably hardly make it because their paycheck is not enough to support them, pay the bills and all of that. But let me ask you a question. Do you know who these people are? Do you know? Well, Imam and the board knows, and that's why we give the money sometimes, and so they can take care of these people. No, nope, it doesn't cut it. It really doesn't cut it. That's not the approach of a family. That's the, the approach of people, you know, doing things on, the, on their own, individual, and they, there is no really communication. There is no connection whatsoever. So there is no blessing. There is no uh, foundation of love, of communication, of connection. So it becomes as something that is more superficial versus genuine. And we want to create genuine relations between people and strengthen this bond between people through the relations that they must establish between each other. And, t and I'm telling you, that's the only way forward. And the more we strive towards fulfilling these two dimensions, the more khair we're going to see in the future. Often we complain, I I'm sorry, I don't wanna turn this into a lecture or anything, but you know, I have this in my heart and I gotta let you know. I gotta let you know this concern so inshallah we can see better and better in the future. You know, um, we start complaining about feeling inferior, our children. We start complaining about having stress and suffering from anxiety. We start talking about our children not respecting their own values as Muslims. We start talking about our children doing drugs and having partners without them even being married and all kinds of struggles and all kinds of challenges that this society throws at us. Again, if you don't have that genuinity, if you don't have that strength and that connection between the community members, if you don't have a healthy community that is based on these two different dimensions, you know, it's going to be really, really hard to do something in the future. It's going to be really hard to serve these young people. Why? Because it's just, there is no foundation. How can we serve when we haven't done our job first to begin with? Because our consideration towards the mosque was different. We never really considered the mosque or the institution or the organization the way how we should have. 
So we always treated it as a place where, you know, we just go and perform prayers. And if we can criticize, we must criticize. You know, we, we, we look for mistakes of the Imam. We look for the shortcomings of the board members. We are ready to criticize and say, but they don't know how to do this. They should do this in this other way. We never talk about it. We don't go to them and tell them anything, but they should not have done it that way. This is the right way. And sometimes we say these things even in front of our children. And we don't care who's around us but because we want to act like we're smart. You know, like we know something. We know better than them. We're more qualified. Than, we're more professional than them. So, you know, I need to speak. I need to say something. Yeah, but you're probably saying it in the wrong crowd. And you're probably saying it in the wrong place. Bismillah, come, help us out. And overall, help us build that bond between the community members. That is essential right there. Because if that's there, alhamdulillah, everything will be amazing. So, going back again after this uh, few minutes right here talking about this one. I want to conclude tonight, inshallah, um, by mentioning the dua of the khatim of the Quran. We recited the Quran, alhamdulillah. We completed the whole Quran during the month of Ramadan. Tonight is the night of Eid. It is a blessed night. So we find that opportunity, inshallah ta'ala, to do this dua. I know we're not in the masjid, but we're all together through this platform right here online. So let's all uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first for forgiveness. And let's all join us by raising our hands for this dua, for this supplication of the recitation of the whole Quran. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufwan ahad, Allahu akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad. لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون 
أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم ارزقنا بكل حرف من القرآن حلاوة وبكل جزء من القرآن جزاء اللهم ارزقنا اللهم ارزقنا اللهم ارزقنا تلاوة القرآن العظيم واهدنا ووفقنا إلى الحق وإلى طريق مستقيم ببركة القرآن العظيم وبحرمة من أرسلته رحمة للعالمين واعف عنا يا كريم واعفنا يا رحيم واغفر لنا ذنوبنا بفضلك وجودك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم زينا بزينة القرآن وأكرمنا بكرامة القرآن وشرفنا بشرافة القرآن وألبسنا بخلعة القرآن وأدخلنا الجنة بشفاعة القرآن وعافنا من كل بلاء الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة بحرمة القرآن وارحم جميع أمة محمد يا رحيم يا رحمن اللهم اجعل القرآن لنا في الدنيا قرينا وفي القبر مؤنسا وفي القيامة شفيعا وعلى الصراط نورا وفي الجنة رفيقا ومن النار سترا وحجابا وإلى الخيرات كلها دليلا وإماما بفضلك وجودك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين ويا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اهدنا بهداية القرآن ونجنا من النيران بكرامة القرآن وارفع درجاتنا بفضيلة القرآن وكفر عنا سيئاتنا بتلاوة القرآن يا ذا الجلال والإحسان يا ذا الفضل والإحسان اللهم طهر قلوبنا واستر عيوبنا واشف مرضانا واقض ديوننا وارفع درجاتنا وارحم آباءنا واغفر أمهاتنا وأصلح ديننا ودنيانا وشتت شمل أعدائنا واحفظ أهلنا وأموالنا وبلادنا من جميع الآفات والأمراض والبلايا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين بحرمة القرآن العظيم وبحرمة من أرسلته رحمة للعالمين اللهم بلغ ثواب ما قرأناه ونور ما تلوناه إلى روح سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم وإلى أرواح جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين صلوات الله وسلامه عليهم أجمعين وإلى أرواح آله وأولاده وأزواجه وأصحابه وأتباعه وجميع ذرياته رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين وإلى أرواح آبائنا وأمهاتنا وإخواننا وأخواتنا وأولادنا وأقربائنا 
وأحبائنا وأصدقائنا وأساتيذنا ومشايخنا ولمن كان له حق علينا وإلى أرواح جميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات يا قاضي الحاجات ويا مجيب الدعوات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم اللهم اكرمنا الله سبحانه وتعالى accept this reading of ours ان شاء الله of the Quran and the khatma uh, the dua of the khatam and also, I want to find the opportunity to pray and to, uh, you know, appreciate the help of our board members at UICA and the volunteers. Guys, these are our community heroes, our board members and the volunteers. Whenever you see them, find the opportunity to appreciate their help. Every single night, board members, they have been there at UICA together with volunteers, giving out the food to the people. Some of them had to break iftar at the masjid. Some of them, they had to run back very quickly at home so they can catch up their iftar with their family members. On a nightly basis, we had over 100 people who came to pick up food from UICA. And I also find the opportunity to appreciate from the bottom of my heart all of those great donors who donated every single night providing food to those in need or to those who just simply wanted to eat iftar and get the food from UICA for many reasons. So those are heroes as well. Those At the beginning, I was thinking, you know what, man, this Ramadan is going to be difficult. You know, we don't have a community coming to the masjid. And how about maybe we have it on weekends? Hopefully we can have like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and, and let's see how this goes. We can provide food, iftar for people on these days. But then, subhanAllah, when we opened, you know, this, when we opened the doors to the community members and we told them, guys, chip in. Anybody who wants to sponsor an iftar is welcome to do so. SubhanAllah, we had all the nights, all of them taken. Whether we were there as a whole community, like we usually are every Ramadan, or not there, these donors, may Allah bless them, they still upheld their, you know, their um, kind of an oath, I would say, or respect between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as many of them have done it on a yearly basis. So again, my appreciation, my prayers to them and to their family members as well. You know that tomorrow we're not going to have um, a congregational eat prayer with the community at, at UICA. Uh, but we're going to have a lecture, a mutual lecture that imams in the valley decided to come together and uh, stream a lecture. And this is going to be the Eid lecture, inshallah, for all the community here in Arizona. I hope you enjoy that, those speeches. And I ask you to pray for a success of unity between the masajids and um, different institutions and organizations here in the Valley, Ya Rabbil Alameen. That's very important. And we are in those initial stages of creating that unity, inshallah ta'ala. Um, at 10 o'clock at UICA, I want to remind you, as you have probably seen it in the flyers, but if you miss that opportunity, remember that we are providing at 10 o'clock a drive-through 
where um, where we distribute some sweets and perhaps some toys and also bagels. And I find the opportunity to uh, again pray and appreciate the generosity of those community members who have donated for the Eid as well. Allah bless them, reward them, accept their fasting and all the righteous deeds of this month. And to every single one of you who have kept up with us on daily basis, may Allah bless you, reward you, and inshallah everything is accepted this month. And Ramadan, it served the purpose overall. Eidukum Mubarak. And looking forward to see you soon, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.